The recording started. Okay, great. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I am Bonnie Sparks with Victoria College Support Services. And we have Tanika Buford here today with Midcoast Family Services for a presentation on crossfaded, the dangers of marijuana and other drugs. And right before we get started, I just want to let everyone know that if you would like closed captioning on, you can click the three little dots down by the chat box to the bottom right and click captions and highlights and that will display the closed captions for you. Um, but at this time, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Tanika for our today's presentation. All right, thanks Bonnie and uh, thanks Melanie for having me once again. Um, it's, a, it's a pleasure to get on and uh, speak with you today. Um, so here we go, I'm gonna attempt to share my screen <laughs> again. Here we go, all right. I think it worked. Okay, so um, like Bonnie was saying, my presentation is on crossfaded. Um, being crossfaded, the dangers of mixing marijuana and alcohol particularly. Now I picked these two um, drugs because college age kids tend to seem to wanna smoke weed and drink. Um, not to say that they're not doing other things, but these are the two that most frequently are used together um, as of late. Now, it could change in the next week or so, but right now, this is what uh, the uh, evidence is showing. So, um, I'm not sure if anyone has ever even heard of the, uh, the term crossfaded. Um, so, we're going to get into that and talk to you about um, what it looks like, uh, what it means, um, the effects of it. We're going to uh, speak about alcohol and marijuana separately, and then we're going to come back and talk about um, uh, how uh, they interact when they're used together, which is the term crossfaded. So let's go ahead and jump on in. Alcohol and marijuana are two of the most commonly used substances in the United States. Even if uh, someone is not a current user of alcohol or marijuana, it's likely that they have tried it at some point, with 52% of Americans reporting that they have tried marijuana and 86% reporting that they have tried alcohol at some point in their lives. When used alone and in moderation, these substances can be consumed safely and legally in certain states. However, when mixed together, alcohol and marijuana can create unpleasant side effects, okay? This practice is known as being crossfaded, okay? So let's talk about marijuana. In order to learn how mixing uh, alcohol and weed together will affect you, we first need to know how they affect the body separately, okay? So here are just some marijuana facts. Um, these are just very common facts that um, anyone should know if they're consuming cannabis. Uh, marijuana comes from the leaves of the cannabis uh, sativa plant, and it usually is green to brownish in color when dried. The plant contains the mind altering chemical THC um, and other similar compounds. So um, people get it confused a lot because they see CBD and CBD and CBD. CBD, yes, is a component of marijuana, but THC is what gets you high. So there's the difference between THC and CBD, okay? Marijuana overactivates parts of the brain that contain the highest number of these THC receptors, okay? Um, and marijuana is the most commonly used psychotropic drug in the United States after alcohol, okay? So these are number one and number two. Okay, they're most common and they're the most used, okay? It can be smoked or vaped and it can be ingested in, in foods. Edibles are becoming very, very popular. Um, we won't cover that in this presentation, but I do have a presentation on marijuana ed edibles um, if you would ever like to see that. Um, edibles can be very dangerous because people 
you know, they don't realize what they're eating sometimes, or they think, eh, it's not affecting me, so they'll keep consuming, and it can be a bad, bad trip. Okay. Um, the effects of marijuana. Obviously, there's altered senses. Um, for example, seeing brighter colors and making things move slower. Um, there's an altered sense of time. Everything is really slow when you're high. Um, it's just mellow and chill. A change in mood, impaired body movements. Okay, difficulty when thinking and problem solving. This is where the problem comes in with school age kids that are smoking weed. If they're high in school, they're not able to think. They're they're just not, okay? There's impaired memory. If you can't think properly, then you can't remember what you didn't remember, right? Um, if your memory is impaired, you're not going to be um, retaining the things that you quote unquote have learned in class that day. Um, in some cases, especially when taken in high doses, hallucinations have been reported, um, delusions, psychosis even. And um, since today's marijuana is not your grandma's marijuana, right? It's not from the 70s. This stuff is potent these days. It, it's been um, biologically um, manufactured to be as strong as possible, okay? So today's marijuana is up to 30% um, stronger than it was back in the 60s and 70s, 30 to 50% time um, stronger. Um, which makes it about 10 times as strong as it was way back then, okay? Again, that's mainly due to the, due to the engineering of the different strains. And um, this is why also the marijuana business is booming. You know, if anyone is saying, I've got the best weed over here, I've got the most uh, THC, I can get you the highest, they're the ones that are gonna make the most money, okay? All right, so let's move on to alcohol. Here's some alcohol facts, okay? Alcohol, also known as et ethanol or ethyl alcohol, is a psychoactive drug that acts as a central nervous system depressant, okay? Alcohol is a depressant as is marijuana, okay? Alcohol interferes um, with the communication between nerve cells and all the other cells and affects various centers of the, of the brain. And despite the fact that alcohol is legal for people over the age of 21, it can be dangerous and deadly in both short and long, long term, okay? It can be dangerous and deadly, right? All right, so this little slide I thought was very interesting. Okay, um, this is a slide of stand. Uh, what's a standard drink? Okay, so you notice that there's beer there, there's a cup of alcohol, there's a glass of wine, and then there's a shot of whiskey or some kind of alcohol. And each of these um, variations of alcohol has obviously a different amount of alcohol per volume in it. Okay, so look at the beer. Yeah, it's about 5% alcohol, which is standard. Uh, a, a cheapy bottle of wine can contain as little as this much alcohol, okay? Um, that's a regular size beer, okay? Equal to that is an eight or nine fluid ounce uh, malt liquor or a glass of um, like Old English or I don't even know the malt liquors these days, but Old English is is a really popular one and that's about 7% alcohol and that's getting up there okay seven percent in one serving kind of a lot okay um and then if you go on up to one glass of wine okay five fluid ounces that's not even a full glass probably about a half a glass of wine is about 12 percent that's a standard bottle of wine not the not the most expensive not the cheapy but right there in the middle, that is a standard bottle of wine, okay? It's 12% of alcohol in one uh, five ounce glass, okay? Which is also equal to a shot of distilled whiskey or spirits. That includes gin, rum, tequila, vodka, anything else uh, that is distilled, okay? Each beverage portrayed above represents one standard drink of pure alcohol defined in the United States as a 
0.6 fluid ounce or 14 grams. The percent of pure alcohol expressed here as alcohol is, is expressed here by is excuse me is expressed here as alcohol by volume and it varies within and across beverage types. Although the standard drink amounts are helpful for following health guidelines, they must not, they may not reflect customary serving sizes. And all that is saying is be careful because um, the way that your body reacts to the amount of alcohol is unless unless you drinking every other day or so, you're you're not really going to be sure. And it also depends on the serving size of the place that you're getting the, the alcohol from. Okay, so always check the, the bottle of the, or the can of beer. Um, always check the bottle of wine to see how much alcohol per volume um, one serving size is. That's always a good hint when you're starting to um, imbibe. Okay, always a good practice. See how strong your liquor is, okay? Let's go over the effects of alcohol use, okay? Obviously, lowered inhibitions uh, leading to poor social judgment. There's trouble concentrating when you're drunk. A loss of coordination. This is why people stumble and fall. Loss of critical judgment. <clears throat> Some people, if they drink, you know, heavily, they're a different person. So there's mood swings. Um, it can raise your blood pressure. Can end up passing out. There's vomiting. Uh, it can lead to cancer if you're drinking constantly or um, have developed a habit. Um, it can lead to liver damage, brain shrinkage, and also cardio cardiovascular diseases. Okay. All right. So now that we've talked about everything or each of these substances individually, let's talk about them together. Why do kids or young adults enjoy getting crossfaded? Well, in my research, I found that uh, there are three main answers for this, okay? These are the three main reasons generally given for getting crossfaded, okay? To enhance the effects of the first drug taken, either the alcohol or the weed, okay? And we'll explain that a little bit later. Um, to increase the level of intoxication, okay, believe it or not. And then because of being intoxicated or high already, people are more likely to make poor decisions and to mix the drugs, okay? It's just happenstance. If you're drinking, then sometimes you wanna smoke. If you're smoking, then sometimes you wanna drink. It just goes hand in hand a lot of the times, um, especially with younger, uh, the younger demographic, okay? Weed is very popular. Alcohol is very popular. So. It's just natural for them to a lot of the times marry the two and become crossfaded. Okay. So let's talk about uh, how crossfaded works, how getting crossfaded works. And this slide, I, I named it which comes first because there is uh, quite a difference if you choose to take one or the other of the drugs first. Okay. So let's take. Um, Weed, if we drink or if we smoke the weed first, drinking before using weed can, inten uh, I'm sorry, alcohol, drinking before using weed can intensify the weed's effects, okay? This is because alcohol increases the absorption of the weed's main psychoactive ingredient, remember that THC. So if you're drinking and then you smoke, your um, bloodstream is already open and and ready, so when you intake the the weed, it's going to absorb it quicker into the into the bloodstream, okay, which generally results in a stronger high, okay. While this may be nice for some folks, it can cause others to green out. Greening out refers to the unpleasant effects like nausea, unease, hallucinations, and other distressing symptoms that sometimes occur after consuming too much cannabis, okay? Okay, now let's just flip it now. Using weed before drinking may, may minimize the effects of the alcohol, okay? I didn't know this while I was uh, doing this research and I thought, really? So I was interested in how this would work. And so this is how it works. Um, 
This means that you might be tipsier than you feel, increasing your risk uh, for becoming overly intoxicated. Okay, if you use weed before drinking, pay extra attention to how much you've had to drink. To err on the side of caution, assume you've had a bit more to drink than you actually have or aim to drink less than you actually would without using weed. Weed um, makes you feel less drunk. If you smoke weed first, it usually makes you feel less drunk. And we'll talk about the dangers of that uh, going forward, okay? So if you um, drink before and smoke the weed second, it intensifies the high of the weed. And if you smoke before drinking, usually you feel less drunk, which can lead to all other sorts of problems in the end, okay? All right, so let's talk about the effects of being cross-faded. Um, after a while, these side effects kind of run together, except for one major part, and we'll talk about that, and that's the greening out. After individuals drank a large dose of alcohol, the THC levels in their blood plasma nearly doubled, okay? Um, the effects of THC on the brain are amplified. Now, people don't usually overdose on weed, but they can hurt themselves because of the hallucinations that they can suffer or the delusions that they can suffer because of the um, effects of too much weed, okay? Smoking too much weed, i.e. the greening out, um, the inability to vomit. I did not know that um, smoking and drinking can cause you not to be able to vomit. Okay, which then can lead to alcohol poisoning um, and uh, increased probability of accidents, obviously with being under the influence of anything, uh, there's a higher likelihood of, of drowning or car wrecks, et cetera, okay? Decreased cognitive function or brain functionability, okay? And an increased risk of dependency, okay? So it's kind of like a, like a domino effect um, if you're smoking too much weed, you can't vomit and you're, you smoke and you've had so much to drink, you can't throw it up. So it leads to alcohol poisoning and it's just all a bad scene, which can all then lead to the greening out process. Okay. So, um, you have to be very, very, very vigilant, know your body, um, and err on the side of caution if you're going to choose to smoke and drink. Okay. Um, now I have a little video. And I'm going to hope it plays. I think I remember to do what I was supposed to do. If not, we'll flip back and I'll fix it. Okay. I'm going to have a little video about what happens in the body when you get cross-faded. Okay. Let's see if it'll play. Can y'all hear that? So can you turn the volume up just a little bit? Because I can hear it, but not, if that makes sense. Okay. Let, let me let me see if I can optimize it better. Let me, I'm going to click off for just a second. I apologize. Um, I want to make sure that I click the little button that I was supposed to. Make sure I click the little button that I'm supposed to click. Share. Uh oh, I didn't see the little button again, Melody. It's at the top right uh, whenever you go. So unshare it. Unshare. Okay. Uh oh, go away. Stop sharing. There we go. And then okay. when you click the share, it's going to be that top right where you optimize. Top right. There it is. There it is. I keep missing it. I keep on missing it. I apologize. Okay. Now we're going to start it all over again. 
and let me know if you can hear Marijuana is one of the most popular drugs for those who drink alcohol, but are there specific benefits or risks when taking them together? What happens Better. to your body and brain when you're drunk and stoned at yes. the same time? Okay. Alcohol affects your central nervous system by changing how your neurons communicate. It suppresses the excitatory neurotransmitter glutamate and increases the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA, which causes information flow to become slow, making you feel less, perceive less, and remember less. Weed, on the other hand, contains THC, which acts on the brain's cannabinoid receptors and causes some neurons in the brain to continually fire, removing their normal refractory period, making your imagination and thoughts magnify. But because both alcohol and weed inhibit glutamate transmission, a key part of your learning process, their combined use is linked to poor memory. A study using rats found that their ability to recognize objects was severely impaired when they were drunk and high. Of course, consuming both will make you feel lit, and studies show that even after taking two shots, the THC levels in participants' blood plasma doubled compared to those who were stoned but consumed a placebo drink, meaning alcohol makes you more high. Participants also felt the effects of weed more quickly and reported a better high with a better mood and other euphoric effects. Researchers believe that this is due to vasodilation. Alcohol causes smooth muscle cells in your arteries to relax, widening of the blood vessels, and an increased blood flow, all of which allows more THC to cross your alveolar sac, a part of the lung where gas exchange occurs with the blood. Ultimately, the alcohol is increasing THC absorption. Other research has found that smoking dope may even reduce the damage alcohol does on your liver. When you drink, ethanol is metabolized by the enzyme cytochrome P450-2E1, but after excessive drinking, this process causes oxidative stress, making cells in the liver become fatty, known as steatosis. Cannabidiol, a chemical component of marijuana, was found to inhibit the cycle that causes this oxidative stress on your liver, protecting it from damage. But before this becomes your go-to party duo, consider that marijuana prevents vomiting. It's one of the reasons medical marijuana is prescribed to chemotherapy patients to help ease their nausea. But but in the case of alcohol poisoning, vomiting is the body's way to remove excess alcohol. So being unable to vomit poses serious health risks. Curious how other drugs affect your body and brain? Check out our drug video playlist, which explains even more from the effects of shrooms. To All right. So I know that was a lot of information, but basically it was saying, just like we said, if you um, drink, alcohol before smoking, um, that will intensify the high of the uh, THC or the, the weed. And then conversely, if you smoke before drinking, it can lead to alcohol poisoning because you'll be uh, feeling less tipsy. Um, you'll feel like, oh, I can drink four more beers, uh, when in actuality, your body is not able to consume all that possibly, and then it can lead to something called um, alcohol poisoning, which, um, like it said, if you cannot vomit, which the THC inhibits vomiting, then that can lead to alcohol poisoning, we can, which can lead to all kinds of other things, including death, okay? So my suggestion would always be to err on the side of caution um, and ingest little bits at a time, little bits at a time so that you can consume safely, okay? All right, so let's let's talk about this uh, bad high or greening out. I had never heard this term before I started doing this research and it really kind of uh, brought it into perspective for me. Um, I, I had never heard the term. So if you're like me, then um, let's talk about it. If you've mixed weed and alcohol or, and are having a bad reaction, it's probably because the alcohol seems to make the high from the weed more intense, okay? That's what we just discussed. The resulting unpleasantness is casually known as greening out, as a green out. And this can happen anytime you consume too much weed, with or without alcohol. I did not know that, okay? Signs of a green out can include shivering, chills, sweating, rapid heart rate, lightheadedness, nausea and vomiting, and anxiety and paranoia, okay? Scary stuff. So what should you do if you find yourself on uh, the end of a greening out episode, okay? The first thing you do is you have to stay calm. And I know that's probably easier said than done in that moment. 
Um, but when it comes to a bad reaction, patience is the key. Your feelings will go away in time. You just have to sort of calm yourself down or have someone there at least to help calm you down and find something else to focus on. Okay, so sit down or lie down. If you feel dizzy, find a quiet place to rest until you feel better. If possible, ask a friend to help you get home. Okay, eat or drink something to bo boost your blood sugar. A bit of food or sugary drink can help release, relieve the dizziness. And stay hydrated. Always, always, always stay hydrated. If you're drinking alcohol, please stay hydrated. Both alcohol and weed can leave you feeling very dehydrated. Drink water to put your body back on track, okay? Um, squeezing a lemon. Um, lemons contain a, a chemical compound that may decrease the effects of THC in the brain. So um, add lemon juice or lemon zest to some water and drink it. Um, peppercorns is also a good remedy for uh, greening out. Uh, crush or grind a handful of peppercorns and then take a long inhalation of it. Be careful that you don't sniff them up your nose, but um, you um, that can also calm the effects of greening out peppercorns. And just simply talking to someone, again, it said, you know, to refocus yourself, just sitting and talking to someone and um, having them talk to you can help you bring your stress level down and consequently calm you down a bit which it's it's a scary feeling i can i can almost imagine it is um and here's what to do when you need to get help you know if you've been drinking a lot and it may be hard to tell the difference between a green out and alcohol poisoning which can be life threatening if not treated let me say that again um greening out and alcohol poisoning can be life threatening if you do not get the help that you need Okay, seek emergency medical care if you or someone else is experiencing vomiting, confusion, seizures, slow or irregular breathing, uh, bluish lips or skin, which means that um, you're not getting enough oxygen to the places that need to, to be oxygenated, a low temperature, meaning that you uh, feel cold to the touch, unconsciousness. And remember, consuming weed after drinking alcohol might make you feel less intoxicated, which can lead to more uh, than you usually would use. Okay, remember that. That was key. If you're drinking and then smoking, it's going to make it feel like you can drink and drink and drink. Okay, you have to be aware of that. Okay, usually a bad reaction to mixing weed and, and alcohol will pass within a few hours. You may even wake up with some, you know, lingering effects the next day, okay? But at least you're waking up is what I can say about that one, okay? Both weed and alcohol together and separately are potentially addictive and can lead to dependence and misuse. Okay, contact your healthcare provider or call the Substance Abuse Hotline and, and Mental Health Services Administration at 800-662-43557 if you find yourself dealing with these sort of things like cravings, uh, a lack of control over your consumption, anxiety, restlessness, or negative thoughts when you're sober, okay? Irritability and moodiness, uh, disinterest in other activities. All you wanna do is get high or drunk, okay? That is a red flag, okay? Changes in your appetite and sleep patterns, Difficulty fulfilling obligations, cons uh, consuming even when it's risky. That's another red, red flag. Um, if you know that you have to be to work in a couple of hours, but you still choose to consume, that may be a sign of you becoming dependent on the drug that you're using and trying to fail, trying and failing to quit. Okay. Red flags that you need to take note of. Definitely need to take note of. Okay. Um, there are always healthier ways and alternatives to smoking and drinking, and many of them begin with uh, keeping your stress levels at a minimum, okay? While it may seem all fun and good at the time, you know, um, drinking and smoking have adverse effects on the body, so you have to remember that. Um, and learning to listen to your body is a major triumph in stress management. Um, 
Here's some strategies to consider. Take control of your surroundings. Um, a lot of you all are in college. Make sure that you uh, invest in some time management or sit down with someone who can help you with that. That's a huge source of stress for college age adults, okay? Avoid people who bother you, okay? Just put up some boundaries there. Learn to say no and state your limits in advance, okay? Ditch part of your to-do list. Like you don't have to conquer the whole list in one day. It's just not necessary. You have to learn to listen to your body. Communicate your feelings openly. Have better time management. Talk with someone. Forgive. Positive self-talk and just simply walking away. Sometimes if you're stressed about a situation and you're there just stressing and stressing and stressing, it helps if you can just get up and walk away. Take some laps around the room and then come back to the task and you'll you'll be able to see it with with uh, different eyes that these are all part of stress, managing your stressors, okay? All right, so in conclusion, um, the bottom line is this, okay? It may seem harmless to mix alcohol and weed, but doing so can be a very slippery slope, okay? Towards getting overly intoxicated. If you wanna mix the two, pay careful attention to how much of each you're consuming, especially if you've never mixed them before, okay? In other words, just listen to your body, okay? Your body will give you signs that it is not tolerating the weed or the alcohol very well, and you have to listen to it. Um, stand up for yourself. Don't be peer pressured into doing more than you can handle. Um, you are the most important person in all of this. And with that, that is the conclusion of my presentation. Thank you so much. Does oh, wow. anybody have any questions? You can also type them in the chat box on the bottom right if you don't wanna speak up. So we can take questions that way as well. I'm gonna stop sharing right now so I can get back to it, okay. question so far and guys if anyone ladies if you all want the presentation I can definitely email it to you or um, get in touch with me M Melanie has my email address if anyone wants that presentation so, but I thank you all for uh, allowing me to present today um, it's a pleasure to be on with you and I hope um, this information has been uh, worth your while. Thank you so much, Tanika. We appreciate it. Very good information. Uh, we're going to go ahead and stop recording at this time.